Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are building the Kerbal International Space Station. We're going to take a few launches to do this and also we are going to make all of this reusable. Everything is coming back to Kerbin, not one piece is going to be lost. This section here is the first part of our space station, the long solar arrays. Obviously we have two massive boosters strapped to the side of this thing. These are going to decouple and we're going to return both of these home. Well, if I can land the damn things, uh, we'll return them home. So, because there is so much to cover here, I'm going to launch this thing right now. Let's get this thing cooking. So because of the size of these vessels and because of the delicacy of the parts involved, uh, we're actually going to launch straight up here for a while. Our gravity turn here is not going to be overly efficient. Uh, this is because we don't want to lose all of the uh, very unprotected solar arrays there on the top of this thing and the bottom. Uh, so yes, uh, we're not going to do the gravity turn too hard here. Saying that as soon as we get above 30 kilometers, we can really bank it over and just thrust horizontal flat out because the atmosphere can't really damage our solar rays too easily up here. So I am aiming here for a near perfect circularized orbit at 100 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin. So uh, just slowly burning here just as we approach the apoapsis, just to gently circularize this as we come up to it. You can see here that I'm also trying to just adjust that inclination difference, just pointing slightly downwards here. Uh, that's just going to help zero that inclination out. You can see in the top left panel there, um, Kerbal Engineer basically telling us what our inclination readout is. It is a great mod for those of you that don't use uh, Kerbal Engineer. Uh, certainly recommend that one. It's, uh, it's extremely useful just to have all the numbers that you want attached there up in the top panel. Now we do need to be slightly careful with our fuel usage because we want to bring these boosters back and land them back at the Kerbal Space Center or very close to it. So we need just a little bit of fuel to help us in our return. There's no heat shields on these things. So yes, we need to just be a little careful here. Just need a few more puffs of the engine just to circularize this. Uh, you'll see there you want to get your last little burn just as you hit your time to apoapsis uh, approaching zero. So there we go there. Uh, we're in a nice orbit here now. So I've just time warped there around to the dark side of Kerbin and this is so that we can actually get our booster ready to come back and land at the Kerbal Space Center. We're just going to do the first one first. We're going to manually detach it and uh, yes, we're just going to pump all the fuel into the bottom. Now, uh, thinking back, I probably should have actually set the, uh, the fuel drain to do this for me, but uh, live and learn, uh, just manually transferring this fuel here now so that uh, all of the weight is pushed to the bottom of the rocket. And that's because the uh, large wings there are going to push that center of lift way up the rocket, way further than I really want it to. We don't want to flip over backwards as we're actually coming in in a retrograde direction. So a very small retrograde burn there just to drop ourselves down into the atmosphere. And you can see there I was using the trajectories mod giving me that red crosshair there to give us a good estimate of where I'm going to end up after I pass through the atmosphere. So as with all of my craft files, you can find these vessels that I'm launching today in the description, along with all the other craft files that I do for my episodes. So uh, yes, feel free to have a fly. You can even improve it. I'd love to see improvements to my vessels. Uh, it's always nice to see. So blasting through the atmosphere here now, this is the toasty part of our re-entry. Just using the engines here just to slow ourselves enough to stop our engines from exploding. There is a big bunch of air brakes on all of the vessels today, so you can pop them out when you just need to decelerate just a little faster. You can only really use them though after you pass down below around 1400 meters per second, otherwise they just explode on you. So yep, this is looking pretty good. It looks like I'm going to come down quite close. Uh, just going to overshoot it a little bit. Might need to give it just a quick burst here from the engines after I drop these parachutes. You can see there that those, uh, <laughs> those delta wings are giving me quite a bit of lift. It actually started climbing there for a second. Almost slow enough to drop the main chute, and there we go there, so come on, down, 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 down. All right, that's pretty good. So uh, yes, we need to land it pretty much exactly vertical because these things aren't the most stable thing to land. There's not a lot of, uh, of room to wobble with this thing. Oh man, this is coming down pretty fast. I should have set the chutes to open higher. Come on, come on. I <laughs> touched down. That was a little harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, put some more parachutes on if you want to land this thing easier. So you can see there, she's a little wobbly. Uh, we just need to recover this thing. And we can now see that we have got, uh, what have we got, 90... 98% the value of our vessel return because we were so close there to the launch pad. So yep, that is awesome. 
That being said, you could get back even more value if you rolled out a refueler and refueled it out there before recovery, because fuel in Kerbal Space Program is ridiculously expensive, much more uh, than that in real life. Anyway, what we'll do is head back to our main space station part, and we're going to detach that second booster, and we're going to now return that one as well. So I've had a few people ask me lately if I think that uh, SpaceX will be able to return the second stage from orbit at some point in time. And uh, yeah, look, it's a pretty difficult thing to do, and that's because, of course, uh, the, the first stage that can uh, currently come down and land, of course, is moving much, much slower in terms of its velocity. And even it has to do quite substantial re-entry burns just so that they don't burn up the engines on the first stage. Now, the problem with the second stage is that it is moving around five to six times faster than the first stage was. So, uh, yes, the kinetic energy is many multiples of this again, around 20 to 30 times the kinetic energy to slow down. So coming in engine first will just rip the entire thing apart. The only way I think they could probably do it is by adding some sort of heat shield and possibly coming in uh, the opposite way. Although that being said, it's pretty difficult to do that because all the mass is at the bottom of the vessel unless they can somehow figure out how to transfer the fuel weight up to the top of the vessel so that it is much more top heavy. Uh, but of course, if you add a big heat shield, you then reduce the amount of payload that you can get to orbit and it all becomes very counterproductive. So uh, let's just hope that they can nail the fairing recovery soon. Uh, that's uh, going to be another big cost saving again. In Kerbal Space Program, of course, this is not a problem because nothing is scaled the same as the real world. So, yes, we can re-enter with basically anything we want. And, uh, yes, with just a little trial and error, we can land these things. Uh, let's see how we go here. Just a little further away this time. And touchdown, yes, Pearl. Oh, 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 crap, 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 crap. Don't blow up, don't blow up. <laughs> uh, yep, that was pretty lucky. So we can recover that for a full refund as well, even though I, uh, yes, I kind of failed badly there. You know what they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing, especially in Kerbal Space Program. So yes, uh, we've recovered 97 point something or other percent of that vehicle as well. So let's get our next part here underway. This is the main bulky technical part of our space station. We are going to do this entire thing in just these two launches. Uh, this is also a little delicate, so we've got to be a little careful with this as well. It is a little difficult at this point to uh, visualize how these two things go together. So yes, you'll see here shortly how how these things fit, but uh, it's modeled quite closely to the setup of the space station. It's obviously using uh, Kerbal Space Program stock parts, so yes, it's not uh, it's not going to be a 100% scale accurate model of the real International Space Station, but uh, you know, I've got some of the modules arranged in the same sort of way, so yep. I'll be using here a very similar gravity turn to what I did in the first one. That's because there are still a lot of small parts that are going to uh, yeah, bust up and cause us all sorts of grief if we uh, hit that atmosphere too hard. So nice and high, and then we'll do that gravity turn really aggressively as we pass through the main thick part of the atmosphere. Now we have Bob and Kimlin Kerman on board here to test out our space station when we get it all together. But what I didn't show prior launch is that I very, very carefully set up the timing for this launch so that we're going to intersect with our space station part one just as we come up here to hit the apoapsis mark. So we have just a little over a minute coasting to do here so we can just sit back, relax and de-stress knowing that uh, the most stressful part of our launch process is now over. <clears throat> yes, well, uh, that's not true, of course, because the most stressful part of this mission is going to be actually trying to make this intercept. Now, I just want to spot the actual target. Whereabouts is it? Where is it? It's gone. Ah, yes, if you're ever missing your target marker, hit F4, because quite often you've hidden it by mistake, like I have. Now, we want to turn retrograde and do a target retrograde burn as we're getting closer, and we want to try to push that uh, anti-target marker in towards the retrograde marker, just so that we're coming straight at the vessel. You can see here what I'm doing is burning downwards from the retrograde marker just to bring those two markers together, the pink anti-target marker there. There we go, and we can keep on readjusting this as we come in, meaning that we don't need to keep... Uh, doing small corrections to get in all the way. Just small burns here. And, oh, there we go. I just, <laughs> I obviously just got into orbit uh, as I'm coming in to wipe off that relative velocity. Of course, as you get closer, you don't want to come directly at it. Otherwise, if you do overshoot it a little, you are just going to smash straight into it. So, yes, I'm not too concerned about keeping them together as I get real close on the approach here. Alright, there we go. All we need to do now is undock this little sucker 
and uh, we'll get this big booster out of the way. Okay, so to dock this thing together, we are going to control from our large docking port and with part two of our space station, we are going to set the target to the large docking port on part one using docking port alignment indicator and using all the controls available to me. We can bring this in gently now to smoothly and simply dock it together and yes, using those fine controls, using the caps lock there so that all of your controls are marked in blue in the bottom left is uh, very handy because it means we don't keep wobbling around and shooting off one direction or another. It's very important that we are exactly orientated correctly as well. So we have the little upside down T there in docking port alignment indicator showing us that our rotation is near perfect. And there we go docked there. Our space station is together and uh, we can now head back and land our final booster. Now at this time the Kerbal Space Center is actually on the dark side of Kerbin so what we're going to do is just time warp until the Kerbal Space Center comes out from hiding there into the light because yes I hate doing landings in the dark so you can't see anything and uh, yes there's no reason at all why we can't leave this thing in orbit for just a little longer. There's the Kerbal Space Center base there and uh, yes I do highly advise that you just drop a little craft outside the Kerbal Space Center just so that you can easily pinpoint it on the map without having to manually try to find it. It's good to just give it a little base label so that you always know where it is. So there we go, the Kerbals at the Kerbal Space Center have now had their morning coffee. They are wide awake and prepared for any dangers that might head their way. I can't imagine what they might be but uh, we'll just start doing our slight retrograde burn here. And we'll just burn slowly until that red cross is basically in the center of the ocean there, just past the Kerbal Space Center. Now, if anybody is interested in the particle effects that are going on there on the re-entry, the mod for that is called Re-Entry Particle Effect. And all of the other mods that I have installed here are in the description as well. So just dropping below 2,300 meters per second here and you'll see as we get close to the coast there towards the Kerbal Space Center we'll be down around 2,000 meters per second uh, and this is then a good time to start using our engines to start braking. So our booster here still has quite a lot of fuel in it, more than enough to help us with our descent and as we get quite close to the Kerbal Space Center we can give those engines a quick burst just to control that descent so that we're going to land quite close to the runway here. Again we can bring out those air brakes just to help our descent and uh, yeah, we'll drop the parachutes. The parachutes are actually probably almost redundant there because I was hammering towards the uh, space center at such a low altitude that uh, yes they were almost pointless. Anyway, uh, touchdown there. So we can recover that vessel and uh, yes again we will end up getting back around oh, 97, 98 percent the value of the vessel. So yep that's awesome. So yes, we'll head back up to the space station here now and start to play around with it. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do is deploy the massive solar arrays uh, that are oh so familiar to all of us that like to check out the International Space Station. So I've tried to create the modules here, quite similar to the real space station. So at the front, we have the US lab, the Destiny. We have the European lab, the Columbus. And uh, yeah, out there we have also a makeshift arm, which looks nothing like the real arm, but it's more there for nostalgic purposes. So out come all the radiators there, and we can also see on this side the cupola module. The Kerbals there can get a great view of Kerbin as they're orbiting around the planet. But that is not all. We have not only this fantastic space station for you guys that you can launch in two parts. We also have a visitor tour vessel here which is also fully reusable. This little beast is also going to be in the description. We have Burberry Kerman on board with the other Kerbals there. Now this little vessel costs less than 200,000 in funds and it is as I said largely reusable. The only thing you can't reuse is the fuel so uh, yep we're going to return this thing as well. You can see here we did time the launch so that we could intersect quite close there to the new International Space Station. 
I'm actually going to land the booster before I dock with the International Space Station anyway, so we didn't want to get too close for that reason we'll only get out of sync. So finalizing the circularization there, then we will decouple this thing. And you'll see there we've actually got a docking port to decouple. That's just so that we don't need to bring the Rockamax brand decoupler, which is just the worst looking decoupler in the game. I really hate that thing. Anyway, we'll just bring this thing back down to land. Uh, surprisingly, the vector engines that are at the bottom of this thing seem to be much more heat tolerant than the mammoth engines, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it's probably because they're just smaller. So you can basically re-enter this thing without needing to worry about doing any retrograde burning as you come back and descend. Now there's no parachutes on this thing, this is going to be a powered landing all the way to touchdown. And touchdown there, yes! Okay, so we've recovered this one as well, there's another 97% the value of that vessel back. So back up to our capsule here with our three Kerbals, we're just coming quite close to the space station now. Just a very small adjustment burn here as we come in, we want to keep coming in. Uh, perfectly towards the target. Again, we just want to point the target marker towards the prograde marker so that they're overlapping. And as soon as we start doing our retrograde burn, we do the same thing. We want to push that anti-target marker right on top of the retrograde marker. Oh, crap, crap, crap. I was uh, forgetting that I had a very low thrust to weight ratio on this thing. Now this vessel is very easy to dock, you don't need a mod like the Docking Port Alignment Indicator mod. You can just use a locked camera mode, I quite like to just point the locked camera mode at the back of the vessel. Then you can just use I, J, K and L keys to uh, get your translation all organised. And H and N of course to go forwards and backwards. And just general rotation keys as well. And there we go, we are docked there. Burberry can now hop out of this vessel and we can just do a little tour of this thing from the outside. While Burberry does an outside tour, he can rest assured that inside the space station, wonderful research is being conducted. Research that can quite easily change the lives for all Kerbals on Kerbin. Research conducted on the space station, of course, is nearly impossible to replicate on Kerbin itself. Burberry, of course, finds this all very boring. He is a daredevil. He wants to get back to Kerbin as soon as possible to do their next bizarre, stupid mission. So we will wave goodbye to the International Space Station for now and do our retrograde burn here to drop back into Kerbin's atmosphere. Uh, targeted, of course, here for the Kerbal Space Center again. Let's see how close we can get this time. Just heading into the re-entry. Come on, come on. All right, just a little bit. We can actually control the descent just a little just by tilting our vessel. Ah, oh, come on, get over there. I want to hit that runway. Come on, come on. And... Come on. Yes, I'm on the, <laughs> on the runway. Two legs on. And yes, that's given us 100% the return value. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So for those of you that would like a Minmus base flag, uh, there's two competitions this week. There is a random comment draw. So if you leave a comment, I will randomly pick one of those to win a flag. There is also, as usual, going to be a hidden message in the thumbnail. The last couple haven't actually been solved, so I've made this one a little easier. I would, of course, love to thank you guys for your support. You are just incredible. To give you an idea now, you guys have watched my content for longer than I have been alive. Now, that, that absolutely blows my mind. I'd love to thank you all again for your awesome support. If you did enjoy that video, please take a second and give it a like. If you have any questions for me, of course, please whack them in the comments below. Thank you very much to all of you awesome subscribers and those that haven't yet Please do subscribe to see more if you want to check out last week's episode where we did some crazy stuff with five times gravity Check that out in the bottom left a more recent video also in the top right and the bottom right is the best selected for you uh, Somehow by YouTube. I don't know how they do that feel free to follow me on Twitter at Marcus House game and we'll see you in the next video